We've got to recognize that we're in a new era where people throughout America were marching in the streets and protesting night after night after night and working together to destroy structural racism in ways that we've never seen before. Then as soon as we start to see some fundamental changes, we get hit with COVID. And it starts knocking folks in the box and making that casket drop. So if you're listening to this, that means you survive. And I'm thankful. So while you're here, make your inner world your outer world by understanding fear keeps a child safe but keeps men average. And reject your own words and the ideas from others that work against you. And stay focused on slaying that dragon. Because the reality is that there's almost endless opportunity out here for us. But there's rules to this. We've got to educate ourselves and put our sights on goals with a massive payoff. If we treat time like it's precious and stay away from distractions, if we remain disciplined and hyper-focused on that grand vision for ourselves, we can reach the highest levels. And even when you get there, you're going to want to stay on top, so you're going to have to maintain that same hyper-focus and discipline that got you there. It also means remaining flexible to new opportunities and understanding your own risk tolerance, and that means understanding nuance at the highest levels. But you can do it. You can do it if you're not there already. You've got a heavy workload, so make sure you get some self-care along the way. And make sure you keep your inner circle small and filled with people who love you, that you can trust. Because it's only after you slay that dragon that you can share your gold. Part of manhood, or even personhood, is dealing with the intimidation of others and coming out successful and winning through the intimidation of others. And let's be honest, intimidation is part of the human experience. Intimidation is something that human beings practice against one another big and small in a myriad of ways in a myriad of different aspects in our everyday lives and it's important that as men that we develop tools to be able to deal with the intimidation of others and that's the, pur the purpose of this video now I want to give you some tools that I learned from a book and I want to share this book with you because that's what this is about now this book here is called Winning Through Intimidation. And you can see that it's kind of got a, a corny little cover to it, but do not judge a book by its cover. When they when they talk about don't judge a book by by its cover, when they say that when you you know, they are talking about books like this one because a the the title is a bit misleading. You hear that and you go, Winning Through Intimidation, so you're talking about bullying people and being disrespectful and and dominating somebody so they they resent you and then you end up growing a, a stigma about yourself and you have your name attached to some unsavory behavior no that's not what this book is about at all what it's about is understanding the, the psychology of intimidation and how to prepare yourself as a person who can use the aspect of intimidation to win in business to win in your career field if on the job if you're looking to advance and to even win and form healthy loving nurturing relationships this isn't about being an asshole it's not about mistreating people it's not about being greedy and doing things that are unsavory that's not what this book is about at all and that's why it's going for seven hundred and ninety six dollars and twenty four cents for a, a, a an edition from 1975 which is actually the book that I have now this book was recommended to me by a multi-millionaire decades ago and I read the book and it taught me many valuable lessons and I wanted to share this book with you so you can see it's got four and a half stars from Amazon and anything over four and a half you get four and a half stars and above you know you're dealing with an excellent product and this is an excellent book so I'm gonna read this book to you in a series of live streams I'll probably do a chapter or two chapters at a time and I'll just read the book and we'll do live streams and I'll leave them up and when I do when I read this book this is gonna be the thumbnail it'll be an audio I'm gonna make an audio book and this is gonna be the thumbnail that I use the the, the title the, the cover page or, or the front page of the book 
from the cover page on the book from 1975. Now, there are different uh, publications of this book. It's still selling in stores today. You can get a copy, like a newer copy, for five or ten bucks. Five or ten bu bucks. But for one of these original copies, they're really expensive. And that's the book that I have. It looks just like this. Now, I want to just go over what's inside the book just to kind of brief you over so you'll, you can know what to expect. And we'll talk about and we'll read from what some guy what he got from the book. And I don't think either are necessarily the best descriptions, but they illuminate you on some information. So give me a second so I can pull this up. Let's see. Now I need to take off this cover page. Let me take this off so I can read it. There we go. Okay. So this is from, I think this is from like bookreview.com, booksummary.com. And they did a summary of this book. So here, you see here, winning through intimidation. How to use intimidation to deal from a position of strength. And really that's what it is. It teaches you to deal with life from a position of strength. And the main idea here is that the theory of in intimidation states that in any financial transaction, because the author, Robert Ringer, is a real estate agent, a highly successful real estate agent. And he says that the mo the person who is intimidated the most will earn the least. The person who, through a strong posture, does the intimidating will earn the most. Everyone can either use business intimidation to their advantage or automatically have it used against them. And this is true in business. If you ever owned your own business and you know that, you know, the one who has the product, the one who has the most money, right? They they know that they have what the other one person wants. So now they have, they can use that leverage to even get a better deal. And this book breaks this down like a science and it's well written, it's entertaining and it uses real world, world examples. So, you know, it's really, there's four things that it talks about in this summary. And number one is laying the groundwork for winning. So when you read this book, you're going to learn the framework, the basic framework in winning, which, you know, two myths that they talk about is you need to work long, work long, hard hours, right? And you do need to work long and you need to work hard hours, but you shouldn't be working long and hard forever, right? You shouldn't have to work until you're from 20, 21 to 65, working long and hard hours to achieve massive success. And if that's what you're doing, you're doing it wrong. And they said another myth is keeping a positive mental attitude is what's going to help you achieve success. Because what Robert Ringer says in this book, winning through intimidation, it says they make they make the slight they don't make the slightest bit of difference. And it's interesting. And they say what you do need to have a positive theory, uh, positive attitude about is that you need to be prepared for negative things to happen. And you, you maintain a positive attitude by always expecting things to go wrong, but being ready should they come together. And then he talks about working long and hard hours. They have this Uncle George theory where they say, if you're going to work long and hard, the only thing you're going to get is old. And so he goes into details about this. And he's got these theories about intimidation, the theory of reality. And this is why I talk about making sure to see reality for what it is. This is exactly where I got this from. I got this. I read this book in probably 1993, right? So what's that almost 30 years ago? And that's why I always tell you guys, I tell you, I, I, I need you to see reality for what it is. And this book taught me that and it goes into details because if you don't see reality for what it is, right, you, you're either going to use reality to help you or it's going to work against you. He's got the theory of relativity, right? Uh, you've got to look at things objectively, right? And until you do, you'll never be able to choose the correct actions. And we see a lot of men fail in life because they look at the, the life through the eyes of other people instead of seeing things objectively through their own lens. Uh, they've got the theory of relevance, the 30-year theory, meaning you need to have as much fun as possible doing things that can help you be successful. 
and they've got the ice ball theory. You don't want to take yourself too too seriously. Now I'm just kind of brazing over this. And th by this, this description here is really a horrible description of what's in the book because you can't really pick out the gems and then summarize them and it really sink in. You, you have to read the book. So trust me on this. You're going to love it. They've got advanced theories of intimidation, the tortoise and the hare theory, which is basically to think long term and act long term. They have the court holder theory, which means don't be because, you know, somebody, you know, you go to a party and there's a guy, he's got all the answers and he thinks he's so smart. and He knows a little bit about everything and he's a know it all and he tries to intimidate you. And you go, you know what? These and he breaks them these people down as an archetype. The, the men who try to intimidate you as an archetype. And once you read this book, you're gonna say, Oh, that's who this is, that's who that is. Oh my goodness. And it's just so easy to see. So you'll 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 see the bullshitters when you see them. And then they have the three type theory. And this is a really ex excellent back to back to back three chapter series about different archetypes. And there's, you know, business people who act on their own self-interest, but not just business. It could be, you know, on the job, right? It might not be a business deal where you're negotiating something, but it could be your bosses at work or your employees, or it could even be your wife or a girlfriend or, or a woman that you're courting, right? There's people who act on their own self-interest and they just don't really care about you. They'll let you know they don't care about you. And then there's people who will tell you that they're, you know, that they're for you, but then they're going to stab you in the back. And that was their intent the whole time. And then he said, there's a third type of person. And that's a person who says that they have your back and deep in their heart, they do have your back, but they just can't help it. And they're going to try to stab you in the back anyways, at some later date. And he says that all people are one of these three. So you have to see reality for what it is and accept that and then behave in a way that gives credence to these three theories. Now they got the leapfrog theory, which says you don't have to grind your way out for 65 years. What you can do, or you know, 40 years, you don't have to, you know, grind your way to go from a warehouse worker on the floor to upper management. No, you can leapfrog to the level you want to operate on and work there. And he gives specific tools and a description of what that looks like and how to do it. They've got a posture theory. And this posture theory says it's not what you say or do, but your posture when you say or do it. Now they have this applying the intimidation theories, right? Makeable deal theories, the fiddle theory, boy girl theories, better deal theories, the attorney goal line defense theory. I'm telling you, these are these are tools that can help you because they're not just theories on of intimidation. They're giving you tools on how to apply real world tools to help you be successful when others try to intimidate you. They got the dirty laundry theory, the bluff theory. So, so I just wanted to share that with you. Now, this is an amazing book. I'll probably start a chapter tomorrow on Father's Day, if not Monday. Maybe I'll start one tomorrow and I'll do a live stream and I'll post those on my community tab so you can see it coming. Now something else I wanted to read to you and I'll just keep this really brief so this guy here he says he learned five things from winning through intimidation the first thing he he learned was about having a positive mental attitude. And he said this it's less about positive affirmations and more about actual success. He says, you know, don't look at failure as failure, but look at it as a stepping stone. And I mean, you know that already, but it goes in deeper. It's it's a lot better. Like I'm saying, these these descriptions aren't that good. Another thing he says that he learned about is long, long and hard hours are relative. That you don't necessarily need to work long and hard hours forever maybe you just work long and hard hours for four years or five years or ten years but then you have a, another 40 year payoff where you hardly have to work at all because you put the work in early right oh another thing in here he said he learned was when you're on the side of the majority you need to stop and think now that's something that you know if you ever gambled before and you know you know and i'd like to gamble myself and betting on basketball and football and one of the things that i know is that if 
a lot of times you want to go on what the public thinks. Whatever the public thinks, many times you need to do the opposite. And <clears throat> that can be true in business. That can be true with, you know, trying to go up the ladder at work. And that can be true in relationships as well. A lot of bad information out here. Uh, they say um, he's got one in here. So face reality. Acknowledge the situation as it is and use it to your benefit or it will automatically work against you. And we see a lot of guys, they don't really want to acknowledge reality. They won't even say things. There's certain things that people won't say, even, even if they know they're to be true. And then they wonder why they're being punished by life because they don't want to acknowledge the reality that they live in. So they got the four cornerstones According to Ringer, the theory, theory of relativity, uh, that when choosing a course of action, weigh the important facts in a relative light and carefully def define your terms. When someone says success, what does that really mean to others and what does that mean to you? Right. So you can't necessarily live life by the definitions of other people. He's got the theory, theory of relevance. No matter how true or good a fact, you need to consider how relevant it, it is in helping you meet your goals. Pretty simple, right? But when was the last time you implemented this? Interesting, right? Morality theory. Life is short. Aim high and move fast. Iceball theory. In the end, nothing really matters. So stop taking yourself so seriously. <laughs> That's a really, it's really a great chapter in this book. So basically, so they have, you know, they talk about the three types of people and they just get in. He just, you know, it's kind of similar to what we just read before. But this is an excellent book, man. It ain't selling for $800 for no reason. It's a great book. You're going to love the book. And I'm going to read it along with you. I'll have some uh, background music. So it sounds great. And I hope you follow along. I'm out of here. Later.